I wanted to help you guys out with the creation of your sound loops a little bit. What you may not know is that in a former life, I was a professional classical musician for about 20 years. And uh, because of an injury, I had to go into a different field. I wanted to give you the benefit of my past experience as a professional musician to show you some great practices for creating a sound loop. So once you've located a sound loop, like say example from FlashKit, you're going to go ahead and download it and put it on your desktop. If you want to follow along with me, do go to flashkit.com. The name of the file is up. It's in the piano category under instruments and sound effects. And I just downloaded the mp3. If you are on a Mac, you will need to right click on that link and then download the linked file. Okay, so let's get this going here. I have Adobe Audition running here in the background. Now you can do this with any other sound editor that you want, but I find that this is pretty easy and a lot of the students have access to this, especially if you have a Creative Cloud subscription. So I thought I would start with this guy. Okay, let's get up into our files. Just as simple as dragging it in. Isn't that fun? Okay, I'm going to maximize my workspace here. And now let's take a listen to what up sounds like. Great! Wonderful! Now, much like what happens with um, after Effects or Premiere Pro. You can create a larger composition. It's called multi-track here. So I'm going to get this, I right-clicked in the file section. I chose insert to multi-track, new multi-track section. Now do not do this because we're going to delete it in just a few minutes. I'm going to show you a problem that happens when first-time audio people start working on things like this. I'm just going to show you. So I'm not even going to name this. I'm going to click OK. So what happens is they get very, very excited and they replicate, replicate the track and drag it in like so. Now I'm going to make this just a teeny bit smaller so I can see more of the timeline here. I'm going to do that one more time. There we go. Now, let's listen to how it sounds. Do you hear that hiccup? That little bit of space right here. Let me try that again. Right here. Yeah, it, boy, that just drives me nuts. Okay, let me show you how to fix this. Let's get rid of these things. Okay, we're gonna delete that track, we're gonna delete that track. And I'm just highlighting and hit the, hitting de the uh, delete key. I'm gonna go back into my MP3 file and let's take a closer look at this guy. If you look at the waveform, do you see this little bit here at the very beginning that is completely flat? That is where you're going to have a problem with your track meshing properly. There is no sound right there. The, ha the piano hasn't started to play. So all you need to do is cl click and drag to highlight that section and then simply delete it. We're going to do that on the other side too. There we go. So once you have that part fixed, you've taken out that little bit of artificial space. Now you're ready to start working inside of the multi-track session. So let me open that one up. Excuse me, I'm going to save this file. Yes, want to save. Let's go back into the multi-track. I'm going to double click and open that guy. Pull this in. And now let's pull another one down. This is holding down the Alt or the Option key if you're on a Mac, and then click and drag. So hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag, and then I'll bring out a new copy of that. Let's listen to how this one sounds now. Much, much better. 
Now, the final thing to do is to get this new session out of Audition. And let's go to File. And we want to Export Multi-Track Mixdown. So this is not, um, it's not intuitive. Okay, so Multi-Track Mixdown, and you want Entire Session. We're going to give this a file name of my loop. Notice that it, weren't, it wants to turn this wave file in, excuse me, this mp3 file into a wave. But we're going to fix that in just a second. To be honest, if you start with a quality of an mp3 file and you do a final output of a wave, there is going to be no increased quality of sound. So I'm just going to leave it as an mp3 format. And let's go down to mp3. Choose the place you want this to happen. So I'm just going to stick it right on my desktop, save it, and click OK. Now let's go test our little file there. It's called My Loop. I'm going to open this with QuickTime or iTunes, either one. Great. That's exactly what I was wanting to find out in here. It sounds like the loops is in very good working order. We've gotten rid of the, the really, really awkward pause in between each one of the sections of the loop. So that's a little bit of a tip about how to make a more professional sounding loop. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys in the next video.